Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. If you are interested in women authors, and especially the Women's Prize, then you're in the right place today because I am going to be talking about the other Women's Prize. Um, if you've been on BookTube this week, uh, then you may, and last week I guess a little bit, then you may have seen a few videos about the Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, I watched a lot of prediction videos and then the long list uh, was announced on March the 7th and I watched several of the reaction videos for that. And I basically follow this prize by following other people who follow the prize. And the prize has awarded some incredible books and authors, and I've read several and have uh, even more on my TBR and on my shelves. And I love the buzz around this prize. And I am still very interested in it. Um, as many of you know, I try to keep my finger on the pulse of Canadian literature. And there is one Canadian book in the long list this year and um, other Canadians have one in the past, um, which is what led me to notice that no one is really talking about a new major prize. Uh, the Carol Shields Prize for Fiction, which celebrates creativity and excellence in fiction by women and non-binary writers in the United States and in Canada. As I was preparing for this video, I watched uh, one of the videos from Lindy from Magpie, Lindy's Magpie Reads, and she mentioned this prize. So it is out there. Um, if you follow the Women's Prize, then Carol Shields might be familiar to you. She won the Women's Prize in 1998 for her novel Larry's Party. It's still on my shelf unread. Um, she was born in the US and she was a Canadian based author. I would say that she's one of Canada's most respected authors and she was um, really committed to the recognition of writers voices and their lives. So like the Women's Prize, um, the Carol Shields Prize has five jury members. Uh, this year they include Anita Rao Badami, uh, Marilyn Simons, Monique Truong, Katerina Vermette, and Crystal Wilkinson. So also like the Women's Prize, this long list was announced this week and it included 15 authors um, from across Canada and across the US. And the winner of the Carol Shields Prize will receive 150,000 US dollars and they receive a residency at Fogo Island Inn, which is incredible. Fogo Island Inn is in Newfoundland, and it is like no other place. It's really worth looking up if you have never heard of it. I'll put a picture up, but um, you need to see it. So this is way more like than the Women's Prize in which um, I think each winner receives 30,000 pounds. Um, so I thought that I would share the 15 books on the long list and, and the authors. Um, so let's get started. Um, first up is Brown Girls by Daphne Palassi Andriades. I hope I'm saying that right. Andriades, maybe. Um, this is a debut, debut novel and I know nothing about it. Um, I'm always happy to see debut novels make the list, though. Uh, next is When We Were Sisters by Fatima Asgar. Uh, this is about the intense bond of three orphaned siblings who, after their parents die, they are left to raise one another. Um, this is a debut lyrical novel uh, that explores sisterhood, orphans, and alternate families. So that is something that interests me. Uh, next is a collection of stories called Natural History. This is by Andrea Barrett. And these stories are about intertwined lives of a family, uh, a family of scientists and teachers and innovators that I guess Andrea Barrett has been weaving through multiple books. So that's that's kind of interesting, but I don't know if you need to read the books before understanding this. We'll have to see. Activities of Daily Living by Lisa Haseo uh, Chen. This explores the interconnection between work and life, loneliness and kinship, and the projects that occupy our time. Then you might notice that I'm not saying a whole lot about these books. <laughs> um, 
because like the Women's Prize, there are a lot of books um, on the long list that I've never heard of, uh, which is really, that's a good thing, I think. It's one of the things that I like about both of the prizes is that they introduce me to new books and new authors. Um, so next is an Indigenous author uh, currently living in the same province that I live in, in Alberta. Um, God Isn't Here Today, and this is by Francine Cunningham. And this is a short story collection that has uh, many different forms and genres. Woman of Light by Callie Fajardo and Steen. Um, this is a story that spans five generations of an indigenous uh, Chicano family in the American West. Let There Be Light by Leanna Fink, I think it is. Um, this one really has my attention because uh, in the past I have loved some other books that are similar in a way. Um, this is a reimagining of the Old Testament, uh, specifically reimagining of Genesis. And God is a woman, Abraham lives in New York City, and there are just a lot of twists along the way. We Should Not Be Afraid of the Sky by Emma Hooper. So Emma Hooper is an author that has been on my radar for a while because um, she has been long listed for the Giller Prize in the past. And this is a story of five young women rebelling against an era that um, really relies on their submission and it pushes the boundaries. Thank you, Mr. Nixon by Gish Jen. Uh, this takes a look at the 50 years since the opening of China and its unexpected effects on the lives of ordinary regular people. So this is something that I can definitely learn more about because I don't know much about this topic at all. Next is a book that I actually have on my shelf and this is Junie by Shailene, Shailene Knight. Um, this is about mother-daughter relationships and it is set in the former uh, Hogan's Alley neighborhood of Vancouver. And I am really hoping to get to this book pretty soon. Um, what We Fed to the Manticore by Talia Lakshmi Kalluri. Um, this story has animal narrators uh, to understand the triumphs, heartbreaks, and complexities of the creatures that share our world and planet. Um, so I have read a few other books that kind of use this animal narrators as a device. Some of them haven't worked out too well, um, so I'm hoping that this goes better than the ones that I'm thinking of right now. Um, next is a book that I have actually read because it was shortlisted for the Giller Prize last year. It is We Measure the Earth with Our Bodies by Sarah Yangsam Lama. This is um, another debut novel and it's about a Tibetan family's journey through exile. Um, plus, I still love the cover of this book. And then next up is the winner of last year's Giller Prize, and that is The Sleeping Car Porter by Suzette Mayer, um, another Calgarian. So it will be interesting to see how far uh, this book goes, since it has already won the Giller and is now you know, up against different books. Um, either way, this is an important book for Canada's Black history. It follows Baxter, a queer black man um, working on the trains as, uh, well, you guessed it, I'm sure, a sleeping car porter. Uh, so it's a really great book. Um, next up is Elsewhere by Alexis Shaitkin. Um, I have read Shaitkin's other book called Saint X. I'm looking at it right now on the shelf. Uh, which I really enjoyed. And this book is about, um, elsewhere, is about a community where girls become wives, wives become mothers, and some of them simply disappear. So this is intriguing because Saint X was also about a girl who disappeared. So I wonder how this will go in this book and how she's going to use it this way. And the final book on the list is The Furrows by Namwali Serpel. This is a story about grief and the way the past is never far from the present. And I do tend to like stories like that. So I think that this is a really interesting list, very different than the Women's Prize for Fiction, um, which I think, you know, just makes it even better to be able to celebrate even more writers. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to the shortlist for this, um, which will be announced on April the 6th. And then the winner is going to be announced on May the 4th. So depending on how things go, maybe I will have a chance to read at least some of the shortlisted books. Um, we'll have to see. Um, I am not following this in the same way that I follow Canada Reads and the Giller Prize, um, but I'm thinking, um, because it's so new and I just wasn't prepared for it, but I'm thinking that the prize, um, I may be able to follow it more closely next year. There's a lot of excitement around the Women's Prize for Fiction, which is fantastic, um, but I also don't want to lose sight of this new prize, the Carol Shields Prize for Fiction. Uh, this is a prize that I am very excited about and hope to follow it for a long time to come. So please let me know if you are following along, if you're following the Women's Prize and if you are following the Carol Shields Prize for Fiction. Um, have you read any of the books that are on this long list? Uh, please let me know um, if you have read any of them. Um, you know, especially if they're the ones that I haven't read. Um, and let me know if there are any books that you would put on the short list, if you already have some ideas about that. Um, I look forward to seeing where this prize goes and what books it will highlight over time. So I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.